Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Crow. Let's go, Fantasy Football Sackos, episode 19. Let's go. Uh, everybody, Jason Shellcross here. Welcome back to the show. Another episode of the Sackos, joined or rejoined by my lovely. Uh, co-host, Mr. Alex Krogh, who is asleep at the wheel currently. Uh, Alex, wake up, buddy. We got a podcast to record. Time to get it going. Show on the road. How's being a dad? I, I see it's taking a lot out of you. Yeah, sorry. Just trying to uh, get some sleep whenever I can. Figure with uh, figure talking to you would be good. If you just start going on a rant, I'll just fall asleep over here. I think it'll work out great, actually. Well, I, I can tell that you're... Uh, that you're starved for energy. I think when you lost the beard, maybe that's where it was stored. <laughs> yeah. And now that my it's superpowers gone. left me. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> and then for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I, I did not change my shirt, but uh, I have like a little like milk stain from my daughter that threw up on me and it looks like I'm producing milk. So uh, I think things are going great <laughs> over here. Uh, just, just trying to get through and, I don't know. Her kid's like 10 days old. So yeah, it's, Congrats it's again. an adventure. That's, that's awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for, thanks for holding down the fort. Oh, I think it went okay. So I don't, the, the solo sacco bation or whatever we're calling that. I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I missed you a lot, but, uh, oh. it, yeah, it was fun. Uh, what did you think of my mock draft? I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> was waiting on receiver till the sixth round a little much for anybody that hasn't watched or listened, please listen to our last podcast episode 18, the mock draft challenge running back heavy. I did a solo mock. Alex was busy being a dad and uh, it's a, it's a challenge to get through running back heavy. Oh my God, please don't ever do that. If you're listening, just don't do that. Yeah. So the challenge is going running back in oh. three out of the first four rounds. And that, that fourth of those three rounds was uh, that, that I didn't go running back in the first four rounds. I picked Lamar. So it wasn't a receiver and then Ertz fell to the fifth. And so I had no choice, but to take him there. And then I punted on receiver and it just, Woo. It it turned out okay. I think uh, so. Just yeah, I, and I tweeted this at at the account, but it's just like, you know, taking the three running back approach. I feel like that's so 2008 strategy, where you, you know, like initially when we first started playing this 15 years ago or however long it's been, it's just like you got to get the you got to get the stud running backs. You got to get the stud running backs. Right. Since I mean, I've clearly changed my strategy to always try to start wide receiver, wide receiver, or you know, at least go wide receiver in the first round, unless you have the first three picks, then you're stuck doing it. So I, I just, uh, yeah, I, you did fine. I just wanted to throw up at the strategy. Don't do it. First three picks. Oh my god, it's so hard. It's I'm just so stuck taking Saquon. God, poor me. Well, <laughs> it can always be worse. No, I know it. It just I'm oh, yeah, not used it, to it. I, I like having my whiteouts. I know, I know. All right. So uh, today we have a, a very fun episode. It's it's called Keep Trade or Cut. So we're going to be talking about three different players or s different sets of three players, and we're going to go through each of them and talk about who we would keep, who we would trade, and who we would cut. Um, it's, and it's, it's the Sacco version of Mary F. Kill. There you go. KFM, FKM, whatever you want to call it. Um, and these are all guys that are going right next to each other or very close in ADP. Uh, I tried to keep it within five to ten spots uh, a different a difference. And so with that, let's jump into our first set. And we we're, the reason we're doing this is because we want to force ourselves to talk about some players that we haven't really gone into a whole lot. Now the, the first set is like two of the three guys we've gone in depth on, but after that, we're going to talk about some, some different players. So let's go. Our first set of three players is Devonte Parker. His current average draft position is 72 overall. Brandon cooks going at 74th and Ronald Jones going at 76th. Uh, who would you keep? Who would you trade? And who would you cut? So this 
totally depends on what you've done in the first five or so rounds and, and who you're sitting there with. Because if you've gone running back heavy, uh, well, then, hold on. Then, then for argument's sake, what I want to do is this. So this is uh, mid 60s. So this is the what then? Sixth round? Mid, 70, mid 70s. I'm sorry, mid 70s. So this is the seventh round or sixth round? What is that? Uh, early, beginning to mid sixth or seventh. So say you've gone. Be- beginning of round six. Beginning of round six. Look at me doing math. So Don't worry, uh, I pulled up a calculator too. Yeah, Devontae Parker's going 72 ADP. That's that's literally the start of round six. Gotcha. All right. So then, so you've picked five people. Assume it's uh, two of two running backs, two wide receivers, and either a kicker or tight end. So assume you're even, I guess, at kicker at uh, running back and wide receiver, not kicker. Assume you're even at running back <laughs> and wide receiver, and you don't have a huge need for either. So you're even in need. And it's really not based so much on on uh, team comp. You have your RB one and RB two, your wide receiver one and wide receiver wide receiver twos already. So based totally on fair. that, who would you take out of these? Yeah. Three? So again, Devontae Parker, Brandon Cooks, Ronald Jones. Um, in my personal rankings, I literally have all three of these guys right next to each other. Uh, Parker, I have at forty nine. Cooks at fifty, and Rojo at fifty one. Um, and I, I think after looking at this, I need to do a little bit of moving around. Um, so I just to start on this, I, I'm cutting Devonte Parker. And the reason for that is because he's only really done it one year. It took him five years to actually put out a productive season. Uh, we don't know who the quarterback is in Miami. Um, and to go along with that, we don't know really what their offense is going to look like now that they improved on the defensive side of the ball and they have Jordan Howard and the bread man, Matt Brida. Um, so they, they should not be playing from behind quite as much. I wouldn't think as, as they did last year and Fitzpatrick just started airing it out to Parker and Gesicki and Preston Williams or whoever else they, they were throwing to. So I, I think because of that, Parker's going to dip at least a little bit. And so of these three guys, I feel like he's the most unknown. Um, and then, so for me, it really comes down to Brandon cooks and Ronald Jones. Um, and we, we've talked a ton about Ronald Jones, but there was just some stuff that came out in the last day that Bruce Arians, and this is a direct quote. Uh, Rojo is the main guy. He'll carry the load. All those other guys are fighting for roles for who goes second when he gets tired. Maybe who's the third down guy, but they're all fighting for a role and special teams will have a lot to do with that. And that's in reference to Keyshawn Vaughn and and Shady McCoy. So if, if Ronald Jones is going to be the, like the main guy in that explosive offense, um, I would take Ronald Jones um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep Ronald Jones. I'm going to trade Brandon cooks, um, just cause he's the second guy that I would take there. And also a little bit because of the injury history and him changing offenses. And then I'm, I'm cutting Devonte Parker, um, which is actually the opposite of the way I have them ranked. So I, I need to do some changes. There you go. All right. I'm going to agree and disagree, uh, with the, with the news coming out, what yesterday today on Ronald Jones, basically ha- carrying the load this season i think it really makes it very hard for ronald jones not to be the keep here uh especially in the sixth seventh round value that he's currently being drafted at um we did a for anybody that doesn't know we did uh like a up-and-coming podcasters league uh we're we're a part of one i should say and the draft was last night and in that draft ronald jones whose adp is currently 76th which is what early seventh uh, went got drafted at 60, 62nd overall, which is the second pick in the sixth round. So he's he's already climbing, um, and so like I think it's going to keep going upwards. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up getting drafted in like the fourth or fifth by the time season starts. Like because I think we're just starting to see the ADPs rise. And if right, he's a, which is if he's which a three is where back, I've had him from the get go, and Bruce we Arians have had it. yeah, like it may, all right, fine. You had a podcast, you had like a two podcast head start on me. He's my guy, yeah. Nobody listened to the top rookies first podcast episode where I argued <laughs> where I argued Keyshawn Vaughn was going to break out. It's not going to happen. I was wrong. I admit it. 
the facts change and you can change your opinion after facts change. It's true. It was just crime. our first episode. Don't listen to that. My audio sucked. We were nervous. Well, both of our audio sucked. Oh my yeah. goodness. We don't need to talk. Yeah. No. Yeah. But yeah. So anyways, I'm with you on that. Keeping Ronald Jones. Uh, I, I'm going to argue for Devante over Brandon Cooks though, as far as my trade. Um, Devante was a stud last year and he has none of the concussion health concerns that Brandon Cooks has. And I don't really see his volume changing. I mean, yes, they get Preston Williams back, who was leading, I believe, the team in targets before he was injured last season. But I really do foresee another wide receiver two caliber season um, coming for Devontae Parker. I mean, I don't feel like that's, you know, blowing anybody out of the water to say that. Um, uh, I guess for our rankings, yeah, you already touched on it. Oh, you have them right next to each other. I do. You have Devontae Parker at 49 and Brandon Cooks at 50. I have uh, I have Devontae Parker at 54th overall. So, again, we're higher on these guys than where they're being drafted right now. So, And you can get all of our uh, overall top 125 rankings at our website, thefantasyfootballsackos.com. Um, and then I would cut Brandon Cooks, but, I, I mean, really, it's just I like him the least out of these three guys. But I think we've talked about him. Um, we've talked about him, I believe in our second studs or sleepers, sackos and or sleepers, studs and sackos episode. I believe we touched on Brandon cooks. So, all right. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you with can that, go wrong with any of these guys where, the, where they're currently being no. drafted. Um, because we think that the value is actually there on, on all three of them for where their draft positions going. Um, but yeah, just in a, in a preference world, that's where I'm at. You're slightly off from that, but yeah, there, there's no doubt that, that Ronald Jones ADP is going to continue to go up. So it's definitely something to monitor, um, over the next month here as we, um, start entering draft season, um, of, of where he's going to make sure that you can get him if, um, if, if he continues to go up. Yep. So. I want to slide in a little bonus here. What about Cam Akers currently going 73rd overall in ADP? Where would you slide him in with those three guys? Was he automatic like fourth in line? Yeah, so we're doing keep trade and cut. And if if I had an option, I would banish Cam Akers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I like just just yeah, really? just wipe him off the map. I don't even want to talk about him on it. Like. I, Man, oh. the, the other well, okay. the other guys I just think have so much more value. I don't know what that offense is going to look like. There's three running backs there that that they could potentially be handing the ball to. McVay's hinted that he has no idea who's going to be starting or who's going to be getting the ball, and I th- I think that offense really turns into even more of a pass happy offense uh, to to support Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and and get Jared Goff one of the more accurate passers in the NFL, just, just get him going. And so I don't, I don't trust that backfield whatsoever. And I, to him, for him to even be mentioned with those three, I think it's just a travesty and I can't believe he's being drafted as such. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I'm uh, certainly more on the cam makers uh, hype train than you are. I think it's going to start out as a running back by committee for the first like game or maybe half, and then they're going to see that Cam Akers is head and shoulders. Well, well, he's if he stands next to Daryl Will or Daryl Henderson, he's already he- head and shoulders above him because Daryl Henderson is tiny. But uh, I'm not worried about Malcolm Brown from a competition for early down or goal line standpoint. So I think Cam Akers is really good at football. Um, I wouldn't yeah, be surprised like, if he eventually the, takes over. In the sixth round, though, you're like guessing if he's going to be good and. I, I don't like to start guessing until the seventh or eighth round. Um, you know, my, my philosophy as we've talked about is to get somebody that's more established and it, until you actually do it and prove it, I, I don't want to be taking flyers on you. Sure. And so, so pick 73, you're looking at the first, first part of the sixth round coming back on, on the turn. And that's really the sixth pick that you're going to want uh, is, is a running back in a three headed committee that you don't know who's going to be coming out of it. I, I just think that's crazy. Gotcha. Yeah. I, we'll see. Only time will tell. And uh, let's move on to our next set. 
that being James White, Philip Lindsay, and Marvin Jones. Who would you treat? Keep? Who would you trade? Who would you cut? So I, I'm also a guy that once once they're uh, on my team, I like just going back to the well until they prove that they can't do it anymore. So me personally, I've had James White on a bunch of teams. I've never had Philip Lindsay and Marvin Jones on my teams. So that for that reason, I'm going to go with with keeping James White um, because I. Cam Newton has proven that he can support a running back in the passing game. Um, And so we we don't really know what that offense is going to look like per se, but it seems like James White is one of their better playmakers and has been for the last couple of years and Belichick um, and, and company there know how to get him the ball. So um, Philip Lindsay has Melvin Gordon taking carries from him. He's been over a thousand yards the last two years, as we've previously mentioned on other pods. Um, We've no idea what his role is going to be going forward in that offense. And that's not to say we know what James White's is, but um, yeah, just I'm considerably more comfortable with James White than I am with Philip Lindsay, only because I feel like his role in the offense is more defined or known. Whether that's accurate, I don't know. Um, And then, for Marvin Jones, uh, he's always just been a guy to me. Like he, he's a wide receiver that like ends up on the waiver sometimes, or, you know, you see other people starting when their flex spot and you're just like, okay, like I, I don't really need him to be on my team per se. Um, so, you know, just something when I was looking him up, he scored nine touchdowns in two of the last three years. Um, and the year that he didn't score nine touchdowns, he was on pace until he got hurt in 2018. Um, so from a touchdown perspective, the values there, um, but the the target share, the with with Amendola and Galladay and Marvin Jones, I, I don't know what I'm getting. So um for so for those three, I, I think I'm keeping James White. I'm trading Marvin Jones Jr. and I'm cutting Philip Lindsay, um, because I I just think that it's from a more of a known perspective to more of an unknown perspective um, in in falling off there, and and their ADPs are are right next to each other. And I think James White is is considerably ahead of the other two. It makes me upset how much we've agreed through these first two sets. Um... I virtually agree with mostly everything you said with Sony Michelle going on the pop. I, I don't know how that workload is going to be split up. If they're going to bring in Damian Harris, who's ADP, I think we'll see rise uh, by virtue of Sony Michelle going on the pop. It, it could very well uh, mean more work for James white. And if that's the case, like his ADP, I think is only going to go up from this 93 because of that. And I think he is the obvious, uh, keep here. Um, and then Marvin Jones, nine touchdowns last season. The guy is a man in the red zone. Um, I, I would absolutely trade him here. And then Philip Lindsay, who knows what that split is. I don't think he gets any red zone or, or well, he might be on the field in the red zone, like split out wide or as a t- part of a two backfield kind of a look but he's not getting any goal line or short yardage carries. Like there's no way. Mm -hmm. So he's the obvious cut there, I think. Yeah. And, and even so with his thousand yards rushing the last two years. So let's even just say he gets to a thousand yards this year. Like, I don't think he's going to be scoring that many touchdowns. Um, It would have to be huge plays. Right. And so if you're going to say that he's going to average 62 yards a game, 63 yards a game to get to a thousand yards, which I don't think he's going to get to that's, that's six points a week. Um, and yeah, I just think that the other two guys have a, have a much higher ceiling than that. Um, now if, if Melvin gets hurt, then yeah, I, th- I obviously he'll be, he'll be better than that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think Philip Lindsay's the, the clear cut here and I can go either way on the other two, honestly, but I, I would, <laughs> I would much rather take James White. Absolutely agreed. All right. Uh, Sorry, everybody. We did we did not talk about this. Hopefully, we start disagreeing a little bit I more know. so I can make fun of We're Jason. We're going to argue here. Actually, no, we won't because of Ronald Jones. But uh, this was a lot spicier pre, pre-Ronald pre Jones. Um, our next set is Deontay Johnson, Keyshawn Vaughn, and Darius Slayton. 
uh, currently going 98th, 102nd, and 104th overall. Uh, who would you keep, trade, and cut out of those three? So clearly cutting Keyshawn Vaughn yeah. because of what we mentioned earlier with, with Ronald Jones. Um, I, I think his ADP is going to fall fall off. And I mean, we put this together two days ago and then the Bruce Arian comments come and then it's like, well, oh, crap. So um, I, I think that's that's pretty clear. Um, but between Deontay Johnson and Darius Slayton, they're very close. Um, my I think it's pretty clear here. Darius Slayton at, what's that? I'm I have a pretty clear opinion on between these two. Uh my rankings I have Darius Slayton at 96 and Deontay Johnson at 97. My rankings uh, I have Deontay at 86 and Darius at 87. Like I have them back to back, but I absolutely right. prefer Deontay to Darius. I agree. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, come on. We're gonna argue, you. man. That's what the people want. Well, all right. So tell me why yeah. you agree. So they were both rookies last year. Uh, and Deontay Johnson basically outperformed Juju Smith Schuster um, last year when they were on the field together. He had 92 targets. I think there was 30, 30 wide receivers with over 100 targets last year. So that at least puts him in the conversation um, when you're talking about an ADP around 100 um, and he's going to have close to 100 targets again. That would be great. Um, also, we've talked about their quarterback situation being crappy as being uh, a being nice about it and Big Ben returning. And if you can have him, you know, being more of a, a downfield threat and Big Ben's going to air it out, then I prefer Deontay Johnson. Um, Slayton was wide receiver 35 last year. Johnson was wide receiver 38. Um, Slayton was playing with a substantially better quarterback. Yeah. Um, if, if Big Ben's healthy, then, then I think... You know, depending on how you look at it, I, I would say Deontay Johnson's playing with a, a better fantasy quarterback, um, yep. in in my opinion. So, like, for me, and ultimately when I was looking at this, it really just comes from taking a step back and figuring out, like, where do they fall from a mouth feeding perspective? So, like, the Giants have Tate, they have Shepard, they have Evan Ingram when healthy. So that would put Slayton as the fourth option in that offense. Um, and for Deontay Johnson, you have Juju Smith-Schuster and maybe Eric Ebron. Yeah. But like he, he's, pro he's probably the second option on that team. I don't know. Um, I think Deontay is probably the second option. Right. I, I agree with you. So oh, like, okay. I thought you meant like, when you said he, I thought you were talking about Ebron being the second option. No, no, I, I'm just saying that, like, of the two, like, Ebron's really the only competition there for, dethr like, dethroning him from being the second spot, which isn't going to happen. Yeah, I mean, unless um, he's throwing to James Conner out of the backfield, you know, as as the, the number yeah. two kind of three option. But, yeah, right. no, I don't really see so that. Like the, yeah, right. So, just from a, like, pecking order, I, I think you got to go Deontay Johnson just because he's wide receiver two and Darius Slayton is currently penciled in as wide receiver three on his team um, and, and the fourth receiving option. Um, so keeping Johnson trading Slayton and, and cutting Vaughn um, for those three. Sorry for agreeing with you. Yeah, I guess I would put it like this. I think Deontay Johnson might have the higher floor, but if Darius Slayton can take over and become and mm -hmm. ascend to that number one option. Uh, he might have a higher ceiling. I agree. Uh, maybe it's after a couple games. I don't think Deontay is going to usurp uh, Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, like, I don't think that's going to happen. So that kind of limits his ceiling a little bit for me. I think he's also going to have some really crazy games if Big Ben can come back uh, with some, you know, repaired tendons in his elbow and all that other stuff. Um, Keyshawn yep. Vaughn is in the dust behind these two um you know putting it mildly after any sort of mystery is now gone regarding this backfield like bruce and people i mean maybe we should have known better because like bruce arians what like the guy doesn't like playing rookies he made david johnson sit behind a busted chris johnson in That's arizona for like a full so season like, and uh, who was the other guy the little guy 
can can we really trust Bruce Arians and running backs though? Because like you have that example, and I mean he gave Peyton Barber more carries than Ronald Jones last year yeah. too. So uh. like our, you know that that's two clear examples within the last four years where he's clearly not played the best running back. Um, so I may, maybe Keyshawn Vaughn will surprise us and and get more run. Um, Mm -hmm. if, if they determine that Ronald Jones can't pass block and Keyshawn Vaughn can, and turns into a slightly worse version of, of James White, then yeah, that's possible. But, um, I mean, for me at this point, based on what I know in that backfield, I, I'm not going to be drafting him and I don't think he should be drafted. (laughs) All right. Uh, next set here, Zach Moss, Sterling Shepard, Antonio Gibson. Moss is going 124th, Shepard's going 129th, and Gibson is going 132nd. So these are our late round dart throws. Um, I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, double digit rounds here, you know, fill in bench filler targets. Who out of these three would you keep, trade, or cut? I mean, I, I hope people that are listening or watching this are just know that this is a very obvious answer i would hope okay like if if sterling shepherd is sitting there in round 10 at the end of round 10 and zach moss is sitting there who's a rookie running back for the buffalo bills and antonio gibson sitting there who i had to look up and even see what team he was on (laughs) you didn't know he was on washington no, I, I had no idea. Okay. Dad, dad brain, dad brain kicking in. Okay, it's been, it's uh, been 10 days. Yeah. I don't even, I, it's been I called blur. Julian Edelman, Wes, yeah, I called Julian Edelman, Wes Walk, Wes Welker before we even came on. So, uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to rat you out. <laughs> no, if, hey, I, please do. So, I, I mean, this, this seems like it's pretty clear that Sterling Shepard should be the answer, um, for, for who you're drafting here or keeping between Zach Moss, Sterling Shepard and Antonio Gibson, uh, especially rookie running backs. I'm not trusting any of them. And just real quick, you guys talked about, uh, um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire and him being a first, like, I'm not going to have any stock in him this year because people are going to have to take him way too early. Sorry. Side topic. I'm just second half of the first round. To, to what you guys were talking about while I was gone. So uh, so clearly keeping Sterling Shepard. Uh, he's my 84th ranked player in the top 125. I don't have Zach Moss or Antonio Gibson ranked in the top 125. So I think that should tell you pretty much all you need to know from where I'm coming from. Um, I will also say that you're keeping Sterling Shepard until he gets hurt. And then you might regret picking him um, yep. o- over these other two. Yeah. Um, because he's been hurt every year, so that that does limit the upside of so Sterling maybe Shepard. He's the cut he, here. No, he's not. So <laughs> of the two, <laughs> no, he's not. of Of the two running backs, so you have Zach Moss and Antonio Gibson. You, I feel like you have to go with Zach Moss um, because he has the higher touchdown upside from everything we've heard from the Bills, where he might be having goal line carries. But you have to remember that Josh Allen also runs the ball at the goal line quite a bit. And so is that upside even there? Um, or, you know, are they really going to take Singletary off the field to to turn around and give the ball to Zach Moss? They might. Um, and yes, I know you're talking about round 10 um, here. Oh, so, man. This is a whole philosophy yeah, thing. Like, yeah. Also, also, I completely I, disagree just, with all of this. That's fine. And that's good. Antonio Gibson. Oh. I looked up his stats in college. They're I impressive. Don't why, I don't understand why we're even talking about the guy. Um, in college, career, he had 44 catches for 834 yards and 10 touchdowns, which, hey, that's, when you score a touchdown every four catches, that's pretty good. He's that's he only respectable. Had 44 catches. It's respectable. It's respectable. He had 33 carries for a nice 369 yards and four touchdowns. So he's averaging, what, 10 yards a carry? That's correct. 10 plus? So so in two years, how did he only have 44 catches and 33 carries? That is a question for the Memphis football coaches. That is not a question that fantasy football drafters have to worry about. Yeah, but why why is... 
like, why did the Washington football team draft him? Because um, he's good at when, f- football. No, he's fast. There, there's a distinction. He, can, he has a little shake to him. We watched the highlight before we got on. Yes. But, he, I mean, he hasn't proven anything in college. How are you expecting, like, you are just straight up drafting him on potential. He proved enough for Washington to draft him in the third round. That's that's not low draft capital. That is, that's like where running backs are going these days. Yeah, but it's also, like, I've seen bear like the Bears draft people that jump out of pools and <laughs> then they cut him a year later. <laughs> like, just, just because, like... Statistically, they're impressive <laughs> or athletically, they're impressive. That does not translate to being a good NFL football player. Uh, also, Bears draft people like jump out of a pool. <laughs> it's true. I forget what his name is. I'm going to go jump out of a kiddie pool and see if I get drafted. <laughs> yeah. I th- didn't, isn't there a video of Saquon jumping out of a pool this yeah. summer, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so don't, don't draft him. Oh just, just for Bears lose experience my shins. on that. Um, so uh, also we're talking about a guy. We don't know if he's a running back. We don't know if he's a wide receiver. It means he's good um, at both. He's versatile. No, if you're good at both, that means you're bad at both. The double threat. Um, Triple okay, threat. If you no include thanks. the kick returns. Also. Okay. So he's Devin Hester. Yo, yeah, but better. He'll see the field more. Devin, Devin Hester should be a Hall of Famer, just for the record. Yes, he should. Um, Hall of Fame kick returner. So, um, if if you're going to draft Antonio Gibson, it's going to be purely based on potential, and I would much rather be taking somebody else um, than like if he if he hits, that's fine, congratulations. Um, but yeah, to try to see that potential through on a terrible offense um, in Washington, uh, no thanks. So uh, keeping Sterling Shepard, trading Zach Moss, cutting Antonio Gibson, um, and that's that's just where I'm at. I, again, Antonio Gibson, why get out of here with that? <clears throat> okay, great, thanks. My turn now. Um, it's the late rounds. Why not swing for the fences? Like you already have your entire team drafted. You already have several capable backups at all of your positions. Why not go for a guy that could literally be your lottery ticket league winning caliber player in Antonio Gibson? Like, Oh, stop it. I am serious. The guy has talent. It's undeniable. The guy has talent. So, For me, Zach Moss has a higher floor because he has the guaranteed like goal line work. He's going to get all that Frank Gore vacated volume, but he has no ceiling with Singletary there. So you have Antonio Gibson, who is behind a good, not great Darius Geis. And he's good. He's good, but he can't stay healthy either. And the corpse of Adrian Peterson. Like, do you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a potentially electric rookie sitting behind Adrian Peterson and another good, not great running back getting the chance to elevate over the season, over the first few games, and maybe ascend to that number one role a la Alvin Kamara behind Adrian Peterson and Mark Ingram as a rookie. Kamara did the same thing. Now, Kamara was also drafted in the first round. Antonio Gibson was not. I'm just saying Antonio Gibson is there because he has all of the talent to be a three down back. Like the guy can catch the ball. He just has to learn the, the, the pass protections. He has the ceiling that Zach Moss does not have. And Sterling Shepard is one concussion away from not playing football anymore and has not stayed healthy since coming into the league. So granted, I mean, if he stays healthy, he's a tremendous value going at 129, 100, like the 130 range is crazy. So, but you already have a bunch of receivers then too. So Assuming, you know, team makeup, I would rather swing for the fences at running back with Antonio Gibson late than draft another receiver that's just going to sit on my bench and I'm not going to use anyway, like other than bye weeks. 
Like I'd much rather take Antonio Gibson here, have the ceiling, have the the league winning lottery ticket than Zach Moss, who's going to be like a touchdown dependent flex caliber player and and by week fill in like if you want reliability in the late rounds, go Zach Moss. He's not going to touch Devin Singletary's workload, though. Um, so I but would at least he at least he's a backup running back where Singletary got hurt and Zach Moss would, would be the guy there. And Singletary's know, gotten hurt before, too. Right. But I, I'm like in Washington. I don't know who would get hurt for him to take on a bigger role like because we, we don't know if he's a like, is he like Tariq Cohen? Like he's bigger than Tariq Cohen. He's faster he's than Tariq feet. Cohen. No, I, I know. I, I, I know that. But I'm just saying we, we have no idea how he's going to be used. No, we don't. But I think I trust Riverboat Ron to find out and 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 really, you know, put him in a position to succeed. So you would be definitely gambling if you took. Oh, absolutely. Antonio Gibson. And uh, his ADP again being in the uh, in the twelfth. His ADP is the lowest here. out of all three of these guys at one thirty two. Yeah. Um, no, just no thanks. So, if you want the late round dart throw, Antonio Gibson. If you want to, you would cut him. You would cut him immediately. The first week he'd be on the field like eight percent of snaps, and you'd be like, "Bye, bye." Well, I mean. The thing is, like, with COVID and not having any time to learn the system, it really just messes everything up. If you drafted Antonio Gibson, you would have to hold him for, like, a month to see if his snap percentage increases and he's on the field more. You're not doing that, so why even draft him? If I did that, I would probably hold him for, like, three weeks to see if if he actually got on the field more. I would be shocked if you held on to him for three weeks. But these are all late round, late round targets. But don't do it, guys. I promise you, you'll be happier if you Take Sterling Shepard. Ho- hope he doesn't get concussed again. Yeah, absolutely. He, he would. I mean, it's, if he stays healthy for a season, it's a great value. Correct. And then. Which you have to hope. So those are the lottery ticket guys. And then there's Zach Moss. But. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't believe we just talked about Antonio Gibson for more than 20 seconds. Oh my God. People are going to have to look up who he is and what, like what college he even went to. That's what I did. There I was like, go. who's this guy? All right. Uh, next set, Mike Williams, Nikhil Harry and Deshaun Jackson going 134th, 136th and 137th. So these are like round 11, 12 guys. Uh, yeah, can I take all of them over Antonio Gibson? Is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> You're such a troll. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, Nikhil Harry was a rookie last year. They drafted him high for, for the Patriots. Is he your keep out uh, of this bunch? Yeah, he is. Why? Um, He's the second on this team behind Mo Sanu. Well, really behind well, if, third, I was going to say he's third on yeah, this team behind, <laughs> behind Edelman and probably Mosa new. Yeah, that's correct. Deshaun Jackson's um, the number one. I, I'm just not, I'm not putting up with Deshaun Jackson. Is it cause he's a, is it cause he's an anti-Semite? Did you say yo, yo, Semite? He's or, anti-Semite. Or, Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, no. The, yeah, well, that that might be part of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> screw that guy. Um, yeah, no, it just doesn't stay healthy. He'll start out the season with his classic uh, four catches for 160 yards and two touchdowns, yeah, and then pull a hamstring, and then you won't see him again the rest of the year. Um, and so, if you're looking for a one week wonder, maybe um, you go to Sean Jackson. But yeah, I'm cutting him just because I dislike him oh no um, way yeah sorry uh so I'm you gonna like keep mike Harry. williams more yeah um who's always been like a very reliable number two in that offense yes tyrod uh, yeah i don't care i'm not putting up with john jackson 
Deshaun Jackson is Carson Wentz. I don't care. I'm just, I just refuse to put up with Deshaun Jackson. So bad. Okay. If, if Cam, if Cam's, if Cam's shoulder's fine, that I, and Edelman's getting a little bit older and they're going to find a way to feature Nikhil Harry a little bit more in that offense. And so again, this is a dart throw. And I would rather take a dart throw with Nikhil Harry than I would the other two. I want a board bet between Mike Williams and Deshaun Jackson. Mike Williams? Yeah. And Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, for the whole year? Yeah. More fantasy That's points. Fine. That's fine. I I don't think I'll it's it. I don't think it's particularly close. Like Okay. Tyrod barely throws for more than 3,000 yards in a season. And Mike Williams could be the third in line for targets behind Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry slash Austin Eckler. Like he could be third or fourth in targets on that team. And Deshaun Jackson is, I mean, maybe Deshaun's the number two behind Ertz, but like if he stays healthy, the guy's going to have a hundred plus targets. He's not going to stay healthy. I didn't know that. And, you... and are we really sure that Rager is not the not the number one guy there? Come right out the gates. I mean, maybe. Like, I think that would be a surprise out of the gates, but maybe the second half of the season. I mean, if he comes on in the way that DK Metcalf came on, I wouldn't be surprised. But like, if Deshaun, if assuming they get healthy, if, assuming that they're both healthy for the length of the season. Why are you shaking your head? You really? Deshaun Jackson, has, he, he hasn't stayed healthy since 2013. Like, he hasn't pulled a, played a full year since 2013. Well, okay. I'm only looking for that like... Was seven years ago. I'm looking for like 14 games. 14? Yeah. Out of 16. No. No way? No. Do you think he has a chance? Also, also like, we're joking we about Deshaun <laughs> Jackson's stat, stat line already. <laughs> like... He after week one last year, he had one target the rest of the year. He was hurt, and then he came back, and he was still hurt. One target. He was literally hurt. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, of course, he wasn't in the game. You can't get a target if you're not on the field. Uh, oh, whatever. Man. Yeah, no, just I'm screwed, Sean Jackson. Just I hate that guy. Oh my God. All right. Well, you would you wait, hold on just, just for, uh, craps and giggles. Are, are you taking all three of these guys over, uh, over Gibson? You are right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. So Antonio Gibson is going at one thirty two. Mike Williams, one thirty four. <laughs> you kill Harry, one thirty six and Deshaun, one thirty seven. Honestly, honestly, I would take Antonio Gibson over Mike Williams. And I don't think I would. Mike Williams is the third or could be the third or fourth option. (laughs) Like that's, that's really not too crazy. Um, (sighs) What else? Let's see. I would take Antonio Gibson over Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry did nothing last year. Absolutely nothing. Um, Antonio Gibson has done nothing ever, even in college. Well, I, he he looks extremely talented and is. You don't need to have a bunch of million stats coming into pro and in, coming into the NFL or in fantasy football. You know what you need? Opportunity. And if you're behind the 45 year old corpse of uh, Adrian Peterson, I think you have a lot of opportunity. And if you're behind a guy that can't stay healthy and Darius guys, I think you could have some opportunity. That's all I'm saying. Like opportunity matters. I think a lot more than just raw talent does or college production, especially. And also you're a Deshaun hater. Deshaun played or started in uh, 10 games two years ago. He played in 12. In 2017, he started in 13, played in 14. In 2016, he started and played in 15 games. He started and played in, di- in double-digit games in like 
all every season but two dating all the way back to 2008 like his health thing was a last year thing it wasn't it wasn't just because of you know, it's not like he has some outrageous health track record of missing games he has had two seasons where he's played less than 10 games dating back to 08 He's 33. He relies on being fast. As you get older, you get slower. And once you have bad hamstrings, they don't just suddenly become good again, generally. Gotcha. All right. Dr. Krogh, you heard it here first. Rough. Yeah. Yeah. We're, just, we're talking about a bunch of guys in around 12. <laughs> just getting <laughs> fired up there, about it. There's a reason why all these guys are down here. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into our last set here. Would you keep Trader Cut, Duke Johnson, Jalen Rager, or Elshon Jeffrey? Two guys on the same team, plus Duke Johnson. Uh, These guys are all going. I'm sorry, hold on. Before I sorry to interrupt, Alex. These guys, yeah, they're all going in the mid 140s. So these are like the end of the end of the draft. Um, of the last nine guys that we've talked about. Um, other than Sterling Shepard, I would take Duke Johnson over all of them. Yeah, I guess you have him ranked all the way up at 86th overall, and he's being drafted at 145. <laughs> yeah, I I would take Duke Johnson um, easily o- over over all these guys we just talked about. Um, if given the opportunity, I think he could be a, a, a really good three down back. Um, he. Uh, just has the quickness coming out of the backfield. And if, if David Johnson can't stay healthy, I think Duke's going to, going to have a, actually a huge year. Um, so I, all five feet, nine inches of him, huh? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, just, I don't know. I've just always really liked Duke Johnson, even going back to the Cleveland Brown days. That is true. Um, and yeah, I, I just think the upside's there for him. Uh, when it comes to Rager and and Elshon, um, I'll take the one that plays the first eight yeah, games, six games. Yeah, and right, exactly. And Elshon doesn't seem to be able to stay healthy either. Even going back to his Bears days, he never really um, didn't. He just couldn't stay healthy and on the field. Also, he he looks like he's carrying a piano on his back whenever he's running in routes. <laughs> Um, so for that reason, I would rather take the unknown in Rager because he's he not starting like on the pop. He looks like he's carrying a piano. Yeah, like a big giant baby grand piano on his back. Um, so yeah, I, I would take Rager um, over Alshon, um, just because he's not going to start on the pop, and hopefully he can stay healthy. Um, yeah, when Alshon comes back, that's fine. Um, but basically, Alshon's not getting drafted um, or close to not being drafted. So, I mean, that's a heck of a um, heck of a pickup potentially if you do take him that late and you have IR spots to just, you know, you, you draft him in the late round, you just throw him on your IR spot um, if your league has him and just hold on to him for the first six weeks. Um, that way you just pick somebody else up after the draft. You kind of have a ready-made extra roster position um, d- depending on how your league's set up. So that would be the only reason that I would potentially take Alshon over Rager um, is just because I could store him uh, or kind of stash him in, in an IR slot the first couple of weeks um, until somebody else got hurt. And then I'd, I'd probably just cut him. Um, but yeah, uh, otherwise I, I would keep Duke Johnson um, trade Jalen Rager and uh, cut Elshon. Okay. Um, I, my cut is Elshon because he's not going to play for six or seven, however many games the pup is six to eight games. And, uh, I like drafting people that play uh, yep. unless you have like a, I don't know, a two to four game suspension. That's like all I'm willing to stomach. Like, like even like Kareem Hunt's suspension. I had no shares of Kareem because I was not willing to take up a roster spot for that long. And, you know, on the hopes that he would have this amazing return. Um, mm-hmm. And I certainly don't have that for Alshon who can't stay healthy. So I would definitely have him as my cut. And then between Duke and Rager, I would probably, 
for me, it's almost a coin flip. I have Rager ranked higher, and I can really argue. I can argue this both ways. I think for for Rager, it's I think he could potentially walk into like a wide receiver one workload, um, even with Deshaun Jackson there. And for Duke Johnson, it's the is David Johnson healthy, you know, and he's still going to be on the field as a receiver. So he he could have a smidgen of standalone value, um, yep. even if Dan, even if David Johnson is still playing. So I could understand chasing that value late in drafts. It really I think for this, it really depends on like what the rest of my team looks like and what I want to try and take a swing at here. I mean, generally rookie receivers like they don't really do much like they don't really pop off so it's they're known to take a couple years or at least a full year and then they you know start progressing in years two and three so but maybe if his if rager's workload is there maybe otherwise i'm going through duke if gun to my head if i had to I would probably go Rager over Duke Johnson because maybe the David Johnson thing was a, just a down year for him. I don't know if he, how unhealthy he was. Like nobody ever really knows. Football isn't as bad as hockey as far as like the mystery surrounding injuries, but there is That's a great point. There is still mystery surrounding injuries, and he said you know he was nicked up last year. But what is that like? What does that mean? So. Hmm. I don't know how badly hurt David Johnson really was. And he obviously, he, he didn't lose a step. He lost like eight of them like last year. He was not the same player that he was. Uh, if you watch the El, tape. El, Elshon shared his piano. Yeah. He, was he cut it in half and he gave him half. It <laughs> turned into a full grand to a baby grand. And then the okay. other one went to David Johnson. Yeah. What a crazy yeah, the, trade, the by thing. the way, for the freaking <laughs> da- uh, O'Brien. Like, are you kidding me? Rough. How do you how do you trade? How do you trade DeAndre Hopkins after watching David Johnson's tape last season? Like that's woof. That's what it that happens. Is. All right. Uh, the only thing I have to add for for Duke is just looking. You know, for he's only twenty six, um, and I feel like he's been in the league for like eight years, um, which is not I'm the case. He's only twenty six. Yeah. So only twenty six and. You know, he did have weeks last year of 11, 12.4, 11.4, 16.6, 17.5, and 14.2. And I obviously only highlighted the good weeks, but one, two, three, four, five, you have six weeks over 10 um, as as a backup running back. Um, You know, I'll I'll take that, Um, especially that late. Um, where again, he is the, the clear backup there. And if you can, um, you know, just get some value, I'm, I'm not, I'm just trying to avoid rookies at all costs this year. And, um, that, that would be why I would favor Duke. Yeah, absolutely. I can, uh, so then I have another little bonus thing here. Uh, Damian Harris is being drafted immediately after these three guys who are all going 145, 146, 147. Damian Harris currently going at 148. Uh, I would almost take him over all three of those guys with Sony Michelle starting on the pop uh, in the chance that he because Be- Belichick's the same way and hating rookie running backs. Is, is Michelle actually going to start on the pop or is he on the pop and he'll be activated before the beginning of the year? That is. Do we know? They placed him on the pop yesterday per the UGA wire. Okay. Him and Mosinu were placed on the pup. So All right. he, Michelle is reportedly recovering from off season foot surgery. Um, I don't know. He started last training camp. Um, last season he started training camp on the pup as well because he had a arthroscopic procedure on his knee. So, Mm-hmm. I mean, he returned and played every game of the season prior to, you know, so I don't know. I, I guess I don't know. Maybe if he's back before the season, like this is why you draft in September. The big, yeah, the yeah. big caveat star here is like if, 
if Sony Michelle is still on the pup to begin the season, obviously take Damian Harris here. If Michelle is back, then I would not take Damian Harris. Yep. And like Rex Burkhead still there who yeah. is like whenever he's healthy, he seems like he's always carved out a, a, sl- a significant slice of the backfield pie in new England um, until he gets hurt again. Um, so yeah, I mean, I probably shouldn't be as high on it as I am on James white. Cause you can't really guess what's going on in that backfield. Um, but between Burkhead and white and Damien Harris and Sony Michelle, like, Ah, uh, man, that's that's rough to to try to even project. But yeah, if if Sony Michelle's actually going to miss the first six weeks, then yeah, Damian Harris might have some value. Um, but yeah, we'll obviously it'll be something to pay attention to over the next month. Yep, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of guys that have, that are currently on the pup that could theoretically come back. Like Jarvis Landry is another one that's on the pup. But I mean, if he's back before the end of, or before season start. Ah, talking fantasy football at the beginning of August. There's so many unknowns, especially with COVID. So, all yeah, the I, th- I thought you and Gabriel actually did a really nice job talk, talking about it um, a couple episodes ago where you guys were just like, there's going to be football because there's too much money for there to not be football. Yeah. Um, and it was something I hadn't really thought about. But yeah, I mean, that makes a ton of sense um, where there's just so much money on the table for all these guys. And hope, hopefully they can try to create a bubble like the NBA has, who hasn't had a positive test since they all went into the bubble like a month ago. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it'll be interesting, but please, please, please football. We're, we're getting close and it it feels good. It'll be nice to kind of have it back in our lives. Yeah. And it's something like only 2% of all NFL players have tested positive for the virus. So it's, I mean, it's a small number. Hopefully they are able to contain it and um, you know, Be proactive, and hopefully that continues. Now, coming up on an hour here, we are going to get ready to sign off. However, there is a uh, a small piece of news here that I do want to cover. For all of our Bachelor fans, Garrett and Becca have officially broken up after two years together. Uh, You may remember Becca Kufrin, I believe, what is it, season... (laughs) season 14 of the bachelorette uh they uh they got into several (laughs) heated disagreements because of garrett's continued support of the blue line movement alex what are your thoughts (laughs) speechless Um, i see Don't have a whole lot to add to that other than the fact that um, I, I was reading the other day that the newest Bachelorette uh, left the season early because uh, she found the one that she wants to be with. Wow. Um, and so they had to replace her midseason. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I had not heard that. Oh, man. All right. For all that and more. What's hot- up? <laughs> for- I've had so much time on my hands with a, with a newborn that, that that those are just the articles I need to be reading about. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. Well, we're on our social media page to spare us from any further uh, bachelor, bachelor, bachelorette embarrassment. Oh, man. Please follow us everywhere at the FF Sacco. We are available on all podcast platforms. If you're watching us on YouTube, um, please tell us who you know who you disagree with as far as our keep trade cuts are uh, concerned and if you are a bachelor or bachelorette fan please tell us how heartbroken you are over becca and garrett split now uh don't forget to like nobody cares about that <laughs> don't forget to <laughs> like and subscribe and uh we'll see you next time thanks Hey, just just real quick, like before we go, it's crazy that every time you send me p- stats of who listens to our podcast, the downloads go up every single week. So just thank you guys so much for for kind of sticking with us on this journey. Uh, it's it's crazy we've been doing this for three months already, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, just thanks so much for listening, and hopefully we're able to bring some levity and entertainment into your into your days uh, during this crazy time. So we really appreciate you listening and. Um, Otherwise, yeah, we'll we'll see you soon. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, so we are six days into August. We have surpassed all of the downloads in May in six days of August. And that's I, crazy. In 
by, I believe, the end of day tomorrow, we will surpass all of the downloads that we had in June in seven days in August. And for reference, last month, it took us almost two weeks to get that many downloads. So, like, we're, we're, going, we're heading in the right direction. And uh, thank you to everybody that has listened, shared it with friends, um, watched us on YouTube. I mean, it, we, uh, we have a lot of things underway and a lot more goodness coming and a lot of things to improve the podcast and the show and really put out more content. And it's all things that we're excited for. Um, thank you for yep. listening. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Please tell Jason how big of an idiot he is for Antonio Gibson or whatever this guy's name is. Come on, people. This is ridiculous. Good night. <laughs>